M is back and despite everything that's going on right now, he is keeping busy. We chat about the work that he's put in over the years that not only helped him, it was a great talk with tidbits about passion, consistency, and enjoying what you do. I hope that if you're in a creative rut or just feeling discouraged, that this helps at least nudge you in the right direction. Uh, if you want to follow Sam, he is at Cartar Sauce. That's C A R T A R S A U C E on Instagram and Twitter. You'll also find his info on our website over at podcasters.com slash 306. In that post, we will also have one of the videos that he's posted on his new YouTube channel with video from old parades and stuff from around the parks from when he used to work there. Uh, Make sure to give it a watch and a sub. Remember that if there's anything that you'd like to share with us, you can join the conversation on any of our social networks. Just search for Podcateers. You'll find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, or you can just leave a comment on the blog post for this episode, podcateers.com slash 306. Uh, before we kick this off, I do want to send a huge thank you to the FGP squad, aka our podcast, Fairy Godparents, for what they do to help this podcast go on every week. If you're not familiar with the FGP squad, they're an awesome group of listeners that help us out with a monthly contribution via Patreon. And it's that support that helped make these episodes of Podcasters possible. For more info on how you can become part of the FGP squad family, head over to podcasters.com slash FGP. And like I said, I want to send a huge thank you to all of the members of the FGP squad for their continued support. Once again, thanks to Sam for spending some time with us this week. We look forward to having him back soon. Let's get this episode started. Stay safe, everyone. Here is episode 306 of Podcateers. Well... I'm finally glad that I got my contingency plan up and running. It was brutal. It required 800 Windows updates, which was part of what caused my other computer issues. Uh, It it was was one of those weekends where stuff goes wrong and you just Mm -hmm. look back and you think, man, at least it's not this, right? And (laughs) yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and you have to be thankful that it wasn't worse. But, dude, Thursday, the main water pipe that leads to our house burst. And so, apparently, oh, that pipe wanted us to have a moat in front of our house to protect us and keep people six feet away. <laughs> By the time oh. I caught it, it was a little out of control. We had to call a plumber and everything. There was a bunch of digging going on. And, and the plumber came. It, he's all coughing. Oh, man, dude. It no. was insane. <laughs> OK, <laughs> several days of just dealing with that. And then the night before it happened, I started having issues with my computer because I've been trying to prep because I've been trying to do these live streams. Let me rephrase that. I've been preparing to try to do live streams of us playing games and just different things, you know, for our listeners. Yeah. My computer's archaic, man. Like my computer's like 12 years old. OK. But it required some updates because my my motherboard was out of date. My computer was out of date. Windows required new drivers. And so I start updating oh, all sorts of stuff. And then I get the dreaded blue screen of death. And I'm thinking, no. <laughs> what is going on? And so I started researching. And uh, needless to say, it's been a hectic weekend with the plumbing issue and then the computer. And to this day, I still haven't gotten my computer up and running. Like I'm running on this old laptop, which it is so hot over here on my desk that I could probably smoke a brisket. <laughs> and oh my God. It's, it's a good 20 minutes and that brisket will be fully cooked, man. <laughs> so I'm hoping this laptop holds up. And I'm hoping that it holds up long enough to also edit this episode and post it while I try to figure out what to do about my computer. Well, I have a silver lining for you about that plumbing. At least it was just water. True that. True. True. Man, I've had the non-water plumbing issues. It's not cool. 
Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Those are not fun. Uh, in our old apartments, I remember one of our neighbors had that. The good part is that because it wasn't inside the house, I don't have to worry, you know, about it getting moldy and stuff in the walls or anything, uh, because that is not fun to deal with. Nope. So, no. The the first guy that came out though, man, it, he was a joke. Like he comes out, he kind of surveys what's happening. He's like, yeah, well, it's a good fifty five hundred dollars worth of work you got here. I was like, I'm. For what? <laughs> He's like, well, we got a this wow. and we got a that. And the flux capacitor over there has to be replaced. I was like, yeah, dude, go home. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're done. I'll, I'll give you a call back. So I call another plumber, which we've used in the past. Uh, I had tried calling him first, but he was on a job and I couldn't get a hold of him. Like, he went to voicemail. Wow. That just cha-ching, cha-ching. And so... Uh, so I call the second dude and, uh, he's like, Oh, well, can you send me a picture? I finally went and turned off the water at the street level. The water finally stops. I had to wait a good hour and a half for the water to go down into like the ground because it was like ankle deep when I was walking oh, around. Wow. In there, okay. And everything that got saturated around where the, where the pipe had burst, like I was sinking in, like I'm not a small dude. Okay. So you put something hefty, it's going to sink, okay? If you haven't watched Elephant yet on Disney+, Plus, watch it, and this will describe it. There's a scene in there where a baby elephant gets stuck in the mud. It was not fun to watch. It was not fun to go through. And so now, you know, we, we got the second opinion. Second guy comes out, gave us a much better rate, like a fifth of what the other guy was, like, charging, um and so that that's all fixed and we've had to deal with a couple of other issues because some like garbage got into the pipes and stuff like that while they were fixing it but i mean it's all minimal outside of having to deal with that in the computer and still adjusting to now our kids are on a regular zoom schedule at school like during the week with their teachers and daycare and everything i'm like okay breathe it's all gonna be okay we take a breath. We exhale. <laughs> so yeah, it's it don't be jealous, okay? I know you're you're watching me right now and you're like, "Man, I wish that was me." <laughs> or all of you listening at home are thinking to yourself, "Man, I wish I had that type of excitement." Don't be jealous. Okay? <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but I'm going to keep this one to myself. There you go. <laughs> That's my weekend. <laughs> How was your weekend? Not as bad as yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, uh, in, in case you haven't recognized it yet, the third voice joining us today in the co-host seat is our good pal Sam Carter, Hello otherwise there. known as Cartar Sauce on the social webs, Instagram, Twitter, and all that good stuff. That is correct. How you doing? Good, man. Mm -hmm. It's good to have you again. It's good times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since we've seen each other in person. I think the last time I saw you was at your Wonderground showing. And you know what? You took oh. some amazing photos. Thank you Thank for that. You, sir. Really, Thank really you, good sir. shots. Yeah. I'm, and I'm a nice happy. selfie with your, with the, it's funny to see selfies with a good camera. You know what I mean? Like, wow, that's a lot of pores. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, that was so much fun. Well, actually, why don't you talk about that? Because, uh, I sure. mean, being a Wonderground artist is mm -hmm. just fantastic. I mean, Dream not sure. a lot of people get a lot of chance to do this. I still can't believe it. It's so cool. Talk about the experience. Well, you know, it was a long time coming. Um, I'll start with that. You know, when I started doing gallery-type artwork, because I, I thought, you know, when I was going to college, I, I was getting my whole degree in drawing and painting, going to be a gallery kind of guy. I was with a lot of... Um, artsy fartsy type it's almost snobby art crowd people and they would always kind of just stick their nose up to what i was doing which made me want to do it even more like i was there's some fun nice. stories of just that's the drive just pissing people off through art and i loved it right um <laughs> especially like the uptight people where i went at there were some students at cal state florida and they were like just not cool but um but I realized when I saw, started seeing art shows in L.A., there was one place in particular called Gallery 1988. Have you heard of it? Yeah, that's a good that place, man. That is where it's at. And I first saw um, some shows there. They, they were doing the very first Crazy for Cult. So you're talking about artwork off Pulp Fiction, 
um, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, like, you know, everything that I'm in love with. And that, that made me realize, like, okay, maybe there is something to this because the, um, the other students at Cal State Fullerton weren't really inspiring me to do what I wanted to paint. But um, places like Gallery 1980 was. The fact that that exists means that this is a world. I'm like, okay, I belong here. And that fine line between being persistent and annoying, I finally got in. Um, I was in a Crazy for Cult show, which was like dream come true for me. And then I did uh, a few other shows there. And then, um, um, let's, let's see, I, we, that's how we kind of started doing Popzilla. Because we realized, like, hey, this is so cool for L.A. What about Orange County? So uh, Ryan Batchelor, you know, and, and I, we kind of started the group Popzilla. And we did some art shows down here in Orange County. And, um, you know, the Anaheim crowd, really fun at the art crawl. Kind of, it really kind of became like a, a normal scene. We started at the, at the art Haas with, uh, you know, like the Back to the Future show and then the Tim Burton show and just one thing after another. Just We started doing four a year and it was really starting to become like a big machine. And, you know, when you all of a sudden you have three kids, all, all of a sudden you have this full-time job that's eating you alive. All of a sudden you're doing freelance. It's like, how do I do that too? And it kind of just went down a, a notch. You know, we, we just, we stopped doing it. Um, which was a bummer because we really liked working with Pop Comics. That was a really cool partner and a match made in heaven. And, you know, maybe someday we'll be back. You know, we never know. Um, Popzilla is still like a, a cool brand. We like it. But um, we kind of just fell into our um, jobs to a point where, like, it's just if you can't do it as best you can, we just decide not to do it. We did not want to phone it in because uh, we know how much attention it needs to, like, all the artists. The last thing I need is some artists saying, oh, Popzilla does this or that. Like, they didn't cater to me it's like whoa 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 you know like you know we have real jobs right this is just for fun and whenever it stops being just for fun it's like maybe it's time to take a seat so that was kind of mm. what happened with popzilla but I, I think it'll be back someday i think it, there's still some more stuff to do that but for um wonderground in the same way i really wanted to be inside of that you know ever since it opened i'm like this is like gallery 1988 but all disney are you kidding me i have to yeah. be in this Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about that is my story of because everyone asks me, how do you get in? How do you get in? It's not easy, um, even for me. And I was an art specialist at Disneyland. So I was in TDA and then we moved to the scenic fabrication warehouse um, nearby Anaheim. But um, I, I was working with the merchandise folks all the time. And I'm like, hey, I got to get in the Wonderground. This is what I do. How do I do it? And, I, you know, I couldn't. Because there was uh, a thing about being a cast member and being in there. There was some mm. trippy wires oh. regarding that that I couldn't do it. And I was like, oh, kind of bummed out. But kind of like, okay, well, that's the rules. I, I get it. Well, um, I think it was probably a few years later, I got a new job. And I put my three weeks notice in. And the first thing I did was I called my partners at Wonderground. I'm like, hey, remember we talked about Wonderground and you said the only hiccup was me being a cast member? Guess what? I'm not a cast member anymore after October. And then it was uh, eight <laughs> months later. I was uh, my first show in 2013. So that's – luckily I was able to already have a relationship with them. I've supported them with design from an event standpoint. So I knew them that way. But for mm. other folks, you know, it's almost like they need to find you in a way. So yeah. – um, but what's, what's tricky is they don't necessarily want to see – um, a bunch of your Disney stuff. They actually probably rather not see your Disney stuff, right? Um, they want to see your s stuff that reflects your own style and your own take on things. And I think that would give them a, a, enough of an understanding of like, okay, we could picture what that would look like with a Disney flair. So that, that's like the, the quick version of Wonderground. But so I've done two shows there. The first one was in 2013 and I had four pieces, a lot of fun. And then, um, I, I couldn't wait to get back, but it was just, it wasn't happening and I wasn't sure. And I'm like, oh man, I hope I, I hope I could still be in it again, you know? And you know, just, you gotta, you gotta sit back and you wait and then they call you up. They're like, Hey, it's your turn again. You want what do you want to do? And you, you kind of pitch some ideas and they, they, they kind of tell you what they'd like to see. And then you agree on it. And, and then I got to have my second art show last year, which was probably the best day of the year for me last year. It was amazing. And then, um, I had two pieces in that, and I, that's where I did the Country Bear Jamboree piece, and that's where I did the yeah. mm -hmm. Fantasmic piece. And uh, that was a blast. Both amazing, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
that was it was fun to work on and it was fun too because my last show i didn't have kids and this time i have young ones right so it was really cool to have them sit on my lap while i make it and so when they show up at the art show and they see it on the wall they're like oh i get it now like you know they're only four (laughs) but like they're like okay that that's what's going on here i get it now dad this dad makes drawings fine um so yeah and and now I'm working on some more pieces, which is excellent. I have six pieces in the works right now. Oh, that I'm is pretty awesome. Stoked about Congratulations. That. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really excited. And the timing's right too, you know, just it's a good time to work on art. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanna get mm-hmm. into that a little bit more, but I wanna touch on a couple of things that you said. Uh first of all, uh one of the things that I admire about you and I think is one of the reasons that we click on a lot of levels is you said that if you can't put everything into what you're doing why do it right right and that's kind of how i feel about this like what we do here how we live stream and i get it live streaming now is just a click away with your phone and then you just sit down wherever but i'm i like things to look nice you know and if i can't bring it up to that next level it bothers me and i'd rather not do it until i get it to that level because there's going to be hiccups and there's going to be stuff that just i don't know like how do i say this i don't want me and what we're building to be represented by something that doesn't look good you know what i mean and i think that sounds harsh on some levels to some people but in my head it doesn't compute right like it it scrambles my brain to not look a certain way well everyone has a short attention span right and you know (laughs) how much you know how much work goes into things and like just for example think of um Something that you're working on, like a popzilla art show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're staying up all night. You're you're working not only organizing everything and hunting down artists. You're working on your own piece um, to have one thing kind of represent all that hard work and have that. What if that one thing was something that just wasn't your your uh, you know your biggest swing at it? Right. That's going to represent all that hard work. And you know we there was one thing that happened with a an article in OC Weekly, and it was really weird because it was after the Burton show and they were raving about it, and then we invited them, they came back to the next show, and it was insane. They even said something that we should, we should stick to um, curating, or we, we should just kind of stick to something else. Like, it was just crap, and I'm like, wow, that sucks. And, you know, it, it kind of stung too because I think it was something that I knew. I'm like, man, I don't have – enough time to work on this part of it and that's mm. exactly right where their attention went to and they wrote the whole article about that one thing yep i, I so, get that man you know that's just like it's not like people are out to get you but if it stands out the most and it gets someone else's story then i guess that could just you know it's a learning right yeah mm-hmm. yeah and look i i fully understand that there's people that have been doing stuff like this for years you know our our friends over at nostalgia just celebrated 600 episodes you know they've wow. been doing this for a dozen wow. years now so they have a, a, a lot under their belts they can podcast with their eyes closed you know mm-hmm. so first of all congratulations to them because that's Definitely. an amazing yeah. feat that to keep going this long uh is fantastic but like now with the live streaming stuff uh i i have a lot of people just telling me just do it just do it but i don't feel comfortable with it like i have not not that i don't feel comfortable live streaming i'm fine with the live streaming part i want it to just look good time with the quarantine and being on lockdown um and i thought well i discovered this whole box of old tapes let me kind of start putting them on youtube yes yeah (laughs) so i even with that i made sure i'm like okay how do i make sure that it has that I didn't even think about it. I just knew that I'm like, well, I have to have a uh, a cover that uh, like, how will this look for each different parade or each different upload I'm doing? And I'm like, that was super important to me. Like, this has to be branded now, right? Yeah. I even had, I yeah. even was uh, trying to like kick around a, a good name. I'm like, what am I going to call this? Like, it has to have a name. It's different than my my side business now, which is now my full time business, right? It was my side business, but um, it had to be its own. So I just I'm like, well. Cartar Sauce Theater kind of sounds like Masterpiece Theater. I'm like, uh, I, don't, I kind of just like, well, I can't think of anything else. Let me just kind of lean into that. And I'm like, it's just kind of stuck. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll just use that. But yeah, I know what you mean. It has to, it, even though you're just kind of throwing it together and it's, it's kind of quickly done, um, it still has to be branded because that's the visual, especially like if you're going to see a bunch of the videos that I'm uploading, it's kind of cool to imagine like, okay, what will this all look like um, when it's all next to each other, when you have a whole catalog of like right. awesome 
And right. that, like a lot of the podcasts, like the more successful ones, I think, have that branding. And yeah. they just kind of like they don't change it every couple of months. It, like, no, it's built. Like there's a whole arsenal of just entertainment, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I feel you on the live stream. I, I get that. Yeah. It's, I mean, I really try to apply a lot of what I've learned throughout the years. Like, I regret not going to school for more design stuff because uh, thankfully stuff like YouTube exists and things like LinkedIn learning used to be lynda.com where you can learn a lot of these things on your own. And it's kind of what I did. Like a lot of this stuff, I just kind of learned from watching all these videos and taking online courses. But I learned about creating those style sheets and being consistent and making sure that everything is part of your style guide from Mm -hmm. the way that you put out your logo, from the the fonts that you use, from the structure of everything, Mm -hmm. how you space everything. Like uh, it's important. Yeah. The composition is important. And don't have 20 uh, fonts, you know. (laughs) Yes. I mean, sometimes it's good when you're trying to freak people out. But, you know, uh, in general... (laughs) Yeah, so I totally feel you on that. I'm glad that Wonderground had you back and that you're working on other stuff because uh, I like the style that you bring to the table. Thanks. You know, your style yeah. is very unique. Like some of the I stuff that so. you've made with like the head silhouettes and then the representation of what where they come from. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's super unique. But then more importantly, you have this like really great like pop deco style that's like Mm -hmm. super sleek and refined and i like i just (laughs) love it so much it's one of those things where when people look at that and i'm around and they're like oh my god this is a great piece i'm like i know that guy yeah Uh, yeah i know that guy (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's pretty cool thank you man well that's the thing is that you gotta and i learned this from gallery 1988 is there's a lot of pop artists out there how do you do something that's your own Right, because sometimes I'll be doing right. something and I'll want to experiment, and then I'll be like, oh, "I can't do this. This looks like someone else's style," you know. And I, you would hate to be like, oh, you don't want to like feel like you're um, kind of like on someone else's turf as far as style goes, right? Yeah. Um, right. And that's one thing that was really important too with Popzilla is, you know, a lot of the artists were submitting artwork for for their our different shows, and they were trying to make it realistic to what the real thing is. And I'm like, I don't really need to see that i want to see what your own take is on that once you kind of like flex that muscle and you're not going to get that on your first try probably you know you're kind of going to keep sketching and you're going to do your own thing and it's just going to evolve into something like and then it'll evolve into like okay this might be my my style and it's funny that you said how like how um the way you described it about being so uh, i forget how you called it but coming from the graphic design yeah i love that by the way um (laughs) and like having something really clean and crisp and like that, I think that comes from being a graphic designer and um, working on branding and logos and marketing and yeah. um, even packaging, uh, just all these different types of graphic design. And then you kind of switch over to like the fine art world, which is, you know, I'm, I'm definitely more on the pop art side of things. Um, it really, you have to force yourself to not make it too clean, not to too crisp. So. Luckily, I've discovered the whole world of uh, Photoshop brushes that helps me still make yeah. it crisp and clean, but then I could get, make it look a little bit more raw and, and, and dirty and hand done, hand done when it's with like the different brushes. But when I first started, you know, it still starts with the sketch. I have a Cintiq. I draw on my screen here. Sometimes I draw on a piece of paper, and I'll, I'll take a picture of my phone, and I'll bring it in the Illustrator. And then I'll actually create it in Illustrator, which is as sharp and refined as you could possibly get. Then I take that uh, those shapes is all they are, and I drag them into Photoshop, and then that's when I get all like the brushes and stuff and make it look feel at least a little bit painterly, you know. Yeah. But I, there's so many, so many artists out there, especially on Twitter, that inspire me. You know, Luke Flowers is one. Glenn Brogan's another one. These guys. Luke are just, Flowers is really good, man. He's amazing, and we've had yeah. him in our Popzilla show with Glenn too. I am. Um, these these people are just like, like just. The biggest influences because they like you're just, you just see them and you're like inspired. You're like wow, I want to do that. And then it's almost like if you just kind of have fun with it, you're you're gonna come up with your own look on your own. You yeah. know, and you, you could be inspired by other folks, but you gotta really force yourself to like, how do you make this your own thing? Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's one of the conversations that I've had with Gavin as well because 
Gavin, I think, has a really amazing, unique style when he yeah. paints and he does all of his stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I think him being a part of a couple of your shows was yeah. still great nice for him guy. because, really nice you know, it, it mm-hmm. helped him uh, see what other people saw in his work and it helped him further develop that style by continuing to create those little cards that he's done you know the the last few months uh he's been just knocking it out of the park one after another like his pieces just rock right what's kind Mm -hmm. of what's cool about that is a series now you kind of like it is excited to see what's what he's going to do next and it's all in the same vein and then you start recognizing the best part is if you can see a piece and go oh that looks like his you know Right. Mm-hmm. And that that I think that consistency is something that I try to bring across all of the things that I do. Right. Not mm-hmm. just like with the podcast, the branding, the website, but also like with my photography, like my photography very rarely strays away from the way that I process my photos. And unless I'm testing something out or there's like a challenge or it's like the black and white challenge or the blah, blah, blah challenge, which Sometimes I'll do, but very rarely do I stray away from the way that I process things. Right. Well, you know, just like you've got a strong brand, you know, like I even just thinking of your podcast, I could I could visualize what I see on Instagram and what I see on Twitter, you know, so I, that's that's a good sign. Thank you. Yeah, of Thank course. Um, so, what's nice, too, is that when you think about like um, do when you do when you're doing your artwork and you're trying to like crank something out and you, sometimes you have to you think. This is going to be it. This is huge. This is going to be the piece that's going to just freaking go viral or go nuts. Like you're so excited about it. Mm-hmm. And then it just nothing. 10 likes, baby. Yeah, it might. It happens. Yeah, like you're like, what the heck? Yeah. And then it's, it kind of just throws you for a loop, but you're like, I was so excited about that. You know, it is what it is. Like as long as you got some satisfaction out of it yourself and it was fun to make, that's all that matters. But then sometimes you're, you're doing something and you're like, this is a throwaway. This is almost just kind of something whatever well that yeah. takes off that that's the biggest thing yeah. in the world so <laughs> it, I've, I've had both of those happen often where it's like not just on twitter me kind of like throwing something out there but something even like with artwork at a show i'll be like thinking this is like my favorite piece this was so fun um i love this i hope everyone loves it and you're like it didn't sell and it's still in my garage yeah and there's other stuff where i'm like yeah, this was fun to work on, but I'm still selling prints of this. This is just – that's just nuts, right? So mm-hmm. you just can't think too hard about that. You just got to make sure that you're enjoying what you're doing because if you really enjoy yep. – in all design, even like what I do like professionally, if you enjoy what you do, it's going to show through your artwork. Yeah. And yep. even more so, if you don't <clears throat> enjoy it, it's going to reek. People are going to see it and go, oh, this artist wants to uh-huh. kill himself. Yep. You know? Yep. I remember when we were doing the art walks, which is how Melissa and I met, like I was running the La Puente art walk and the Covina art walk for a while. And uh, we had vendors set up and I was selling some of my photography and some, you know, graphic design stuff that I had done. And I remember some of the photographs that I mailed out for and they were printed on like metallic paper so that the ink really popped and like all these additional measures were taken so that this piece just looked as amazing as possible. And people would like come by and they're like, oh, that's nice. That's that's nice. But then they would look at this other piece that I felt was like a throwaway and I printed at home on like my Pixma printer in my office. (laughs) And they're like, oh. How much is this one? This is that crazy. This is fantastic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's the thing. I know. It's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah. But I, I guess as artists, we're always going to connect with something that we're most passionate with, and whether that connects with other people is really the differentiator, right? And sometimes we don't know. And that's right. It's the fun part well, about so being many, an artist, but yeah. also there's so many things that have to line up, you know, and you're not in control yeah. of any of it. So you, that's why you just do your best True. and and don't True. throw yep. your eggs in that basket. Like, yeah. And that's what's fun about it is at the time, it was just for fun. You know, I had a full-time job. I was working up at USC as the director of design up there. And I'm like doing this kind of stuff for fun on the side. I didn't care if I didn't sell anything or not. It was nice if I did. It's kind of a little slush fund. But um, at the time, but now that if I were to do it full-time, I'm like, that's a lot of stress. If you have to pay the bills, Yeah. You know, you, that's a yeah. different ball yeah. game, right? And I, I respect that, and that's tricky. So, you know, it's an interesting business, and, you know, and, and it's hard, too, because you yeah. put your whole heart and soul into an art piece, 
most of the time. And then um, if, if it gets crapped on, you know, that's, that's tough. You know, you got to be able to have a little bit of thick skin because you're putting a visual out there and people are going to have opinions. And especially, you know, if people are behind their computer, yep. they're real, it's really easy to have opinions and just blast stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, you got to have practice with that too. And um, especially when you're curating and you have to, you know, maybe break it to some artists that, you know, maybe you're not ready for prime time. Maybe you got to wait a little bit, maybe work on this or that. You know, I've been told to F off a few times because of that. And I'm like, oh man, I swear I was doing this with the best intentions just to help you. But some artists don't want to be helped. They don't want to hear yeah. that. So, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I've been on both sides of that too, man. <laughs> Curating shows and, you know, trying to get into shows with my There's some divas out and... there. You know, yeah. And what's what's cool about it, though, is you've seen the divas out there. It, it, hopefully it helps check yourself and make sure that, you know, you yourself aren't being a diva about something. You know, you kind of got to just take a step back and just look at stuff for what it is. Yeah. I think as I've gotten older, I feel like I've been able to appreciate the humble side of everything that I have, you know, because I, I, like the podcast, it for those of you that are new to the podcast, essentially the podcast came from this void in my life because I felt like my creativity was dying. Uh, my old job, like I was working from 4 a.m. to like 5 p.m. I was getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get to work, which was 50 plus miles away from my house. And it was a production job. Like I, I ran a print facility and uh, it was it was OK to pay all the bills and everything, but it, it had nothing creative. And I was always so tired that I couldn't do anything. But I fell in love with podcasts. I fell in love with Audible, you know, audiobooks and stuff because my commute was so far. And that's where I, I thought, well, maybe this is something we could do, you know. So I got, you know, one of my friends and my brother and we just started chatting. And then it just kind of turned into what it is today. Well, how many shows and, have you done? Uh, we're at 306. Six. 305. That's yeah, impressive. 306 is this wow. one. Yeah. Wow. And wow, so, congrats to you, man. Thank you. Thank you. So, I mean, we've been at it for a while, but one thing that I realize is uh, when the podcast first started, we just kind of sat around and talked about whatever we wanted, right? And that was fun. Mm -hmm. Like, it was super great, but the primary thing that kept bringing people in was whenever we would talk about Disney stuff. And I thought, well, that's great because... I came into the Disney world as an adult. I didn't really go as a child. I didn't really like get taken to the parks. I didn't grow up in a Disney family. I came into the Disney world as an adult and it was fantastic because like I could basically go wherever my wallet allowed me to go, you know? So <laughs> I could get a pass, yeah. I could go to the parks, I could buy this, I could buy that. And fandom when you have money is a dangerous thing. Let me tell you that. <laughs> And yeah. I, I fell into that, but I, I mean, I got pulled in hook, line, and sinker. Part of the reason we started revisiting the history of this, the history of that, and we talk about this and that is because maybe other podcasts have already talked about it, but if somebody brand new to Disney is coming in and they've never heard that story or they don't know about that other podcast, maybe they want to hear that story. And aside from mm -hmm. that, I'm learning something new and I love learning about all the stuff uh, like how Disney was built and who created it and how and what the struggles were and, you know, so on and so forth. And that's kind of where it's grown from and what it's grown to. And I love it because I feel like every week I learn something else that not only helps with what we're doing, but it helps me learn about this organization and this company that i've never been a part of one day i hope to be a part of even in a small capacity but i i love it i love the magic that it brings and i love the magic that it provides for people on this level that not a lot of other companies can do if any, if any can yeah. do you yeah. know so that, that's I mean, what's that's... so crazy the fact not to get into it too much but the fact that it's not open right now i know that's kind of heartbreaking i know which kind of leads me to – this is a great transition, by the way. Um, I want to send a quick shout-out to Mikey up in the Bay Area because he recently put up a blog post uh, on – he actually has a clothing company. The clothing company is called OM&M &M Brand. It's of man and mouse. And uh, he blogged about how he kind of keeps in tune with the magic 
as you know, we're going through the social distancing thing. And he was kind enough to include our podcast on the list of other podcasts that he listens to. He awesome. gave us yeah. uh, he gave everyone like a little description of what each podcast is about, you know, who the hosts are, what they talk about and everything. Uh, and one thing that I loved about reading his uh, his post about us is he caught that whimsicalness that I like to have when we do armchair imagineering. Yes. Because look. Yes. Blue sky, right? We're armchair mm-hmm. imagineering. If this was roller coaster tycoon money, what would <laughs> you do to the park? And I so I would if I didn't yap about that stuff. That's you know? what I'm like, saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I love the fact that he caught on to that. It's one of my favorite things to do, dude. We gotta have you on for one of the armchair imagineering. Anytime. Yes. We yes. gotta have you on for that one. Uh, it'll be a it'll be a five hour show. So you know. Oh yeah, go it, for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, quick shout out to Mikey. I'm gonna leave yeah. a Thanks, Mikey. Uh, link in the blog post for the episode if you guys want to check that out. Uh, it's a fantastic read. And by the way, Mikey has some great designs up on his website. He's got this shirt that represents Hades that I think is super slick, and I love oh, that design. Cool. So I love anyhow, Hades. I just wanted to throw that out there. I know it's such a good character. Um, so yeah. Uh, back to you. There's a couple things that I wanted to to talk about before we move on, but um, you you made a huge decision this year, and that was mm-hmm. to move away from this job that you've had a really long time. Talk about kind of taking this leap of faith, right? Talk about that. Talk about what brought you to that decision and what you're what you're planning on doing, uh, and how people can acquire your services. Okay, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, before uh, I worked at USC, I worked at Disneyland for 17 years. In the last seven years of my time at Disneyland, I was an art specialist and I was working in entertainment um, on events, parades, photo locations, private parties, um, anything entertainment, basically anything that wasn't Imagineering. Imagineering is kind of like the permanent stuff for the most part. And then creative entertainment would kind of do the overlays or the themes or they would partner on stuff. Well, um, working with them for so long, I started working with Resort Enhancement on some projects, working on um, like the first Christmas in DCA and working on Cars Land's Christmas, working on some Halloween type stuff. In fact, my last real project while I was at Disney, well, I was the art director for Mickey's Halloween Tree. And my last nice. day was nice. opening night of the party, which was painful like you I love Halloween and I love Disneyland like to say goodbye at that time was really hard but you know I um I had an offer I couldn't say no to Tommy Trojan reached out and after three interviews I kind of said oh, maybe it's time and I was you know thinking about that place in my life I'm like what do I want to do do I want to buy a house do I want to have kids do I want to do all that kind of stuff yeah I might not be able to do that at, on Disneyland's dime so I, I kind of tried to put on my big boy pants and I said goodbye. And what's funny about that is when I wrote my goodbye letter to like all my, my uh, buddies at work, you know, I didn't even like do a distribution list. I, I, I can pick like probably like 400 people and I just wrote my goodbye letter and I'm tearing up and I press send and instantly, so you can't tell everyone cause you're, you, you know, you worked there for like 17 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then like instantly like what, what, wait, wait, what, 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 what? no, like, you're a lifer, dude. How could you leave? And I'm like, I know. I just, I don't know. I, it, I don't know how I could leave, but I, I'm leaving. No one could believe it. I couldn't believe it. Well, um, so I went to work design at USC, and I, and I knew I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I knew I was good at what I did, but was am I good at it because I'm a total Disney nerd, or am I good at it because I'm a good designer? So I thought this would be like the primo test on that, and. Um, you know, I, I wanted to kind of wrap my design brain around stuff that I'm not fanboy about. So I thought that kind of was a good test. And I think I, I passed the test, but then, you know, I, maybe for the first year, I think maybe that first year I might not even gone to Disneyland, which is insane. You know, you're literally wow. at Disneyland almost every day. Yes. Cause you're working there, but you go there on your day off. I, I was able to step out of that world and kind of just not even think about it. I would listen to my podcast still. Um, um, Ricky Brugante from Inside the Magic back in the yeah, day was like one I always listened to. Yeah, um, it's different now, but like back in the day, I just was really into that. Um, and I was kind of just kind of kind of keeping track on stuff, but not as into it as I was before. 
But I'd say about a year went by and I just kind of started missing the pixie dust, I like to say. And I missed doing projects that I was that energized about. Like I'm, I'm not necessarily into college football or I'm not necessarily into it university menu designs. You know, some, some, some things like that might not really kind of uh, inspire me to do what I really want to do. But I'm like, you know, what? this is a, a good job. I really like my boss. And um, it was definitely paying the bills. So I kind of just kind of hung in there and I thought, you know, maybe I'll be here for five years. And turns out five years comes and goes and six years and then seven years. And I'm like, what am I doing here? There was some times when I'm like, I'd wake up and I'm like, I can't believe I still work here. You know, it was like, mm-hmm. and it, it turned into one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I need to start looking. And so I started looking about uh, my fifth year, but I wanted the right fit. I wanted for something to be like something that energized me, to, to do what I really wanted to do. And coincidentally, around the same time, I, I, I started being asked to help out on projects. Because, you know, I've met a ton of people working at Disneyland, and a lot of people move on from Disneyland and they start their own things. And those things, those people, remind they remember you when they need something. So they're like, hey, are you doing any freelance? Are you doing any side work? And I'm like, what do you got? And these projects kept kind of piling up, piling up, to the point where I was working two full-time jobs. And I kind of say that it felt like two full-time jobs, especially with the kids. You know, it's hard to, you work your full day in L.A. I live in Orange County, so you take the train ride to L.A., you work out there for eight hours, you take the train back, then you're dealing with your kids until, you know, bedtime, and then you're starting your second job after they go to bed. I don't know if I was really producing my best stuff, like you just talked about. Um, yeah. If you're not being able to put your all into it, like, don't do it, right? And I... It was hard because I was doing some projects where I'm like, man, if I only had more time to work on this, there just wasn't enough time in the day. And that's when I first started thinking about maybe it's time to quit and do my own thing. But um, I kind of kept it at just part time. Like, you know, I always joked my, my side hustle. But my side hustle was being like a creative director for the Queen Mary's Christmas program, you know, and that was a little bit uh, show director, creative director, designer, event planner. It's like you wear all these different hats at the same time. But it's it's almost like that imagineering type uh, direction or attention to detail you want to give stuff. Like, you know, a themed area of, like the Queen Mary, if you have the opportunity to make it Chris- a Christmas event, what would you do? Well, you kind of think, well, what would Disneyland do? You know, what would if, if imagineering was to do something here, what would it be? And I kind of just put that hat on and thought, I'm like, well, you know what, it would be the heyday of the ship was probably in the 40s, maybe the 30s. Um, let's make it look very mm-hmm. themed, very vintage And as far as the design goes, I was able to do the marketing for it too, which is amazing. Um, I, I started off with an attraction poster for, for this is, this would be the yeah. attraction poster that would be in the tunnel and um, everything else was pulled out of that. So I made my attraction poster for Christmas of the Queen Mary. And, um, all the branding, all the visuals, all the logos, all came from that. And and can I say, by the way, not to intervene too much here, but the the style that you used to create that poster was so amazing because it felt reminiscent of the Tower of Terror and yeah. Buena Vista Street, like all yeah. at the same time. So like you just nailed the era you. and you nailed the style perfectly for the Queen Mary. Thank you. I think, you know, it's funny because I mentioned I worked on Christmas and Buena Vista Street. So I, I helped design the, the Christmas tree that's out there, the ornaments, nice. even the, the kind of branches that are on that tree. Because if you look at Buena Vista Street is in the 30s. Right. So, OK, well, right. if you kind of do some research, what does a Christmas tree in the middle of a central plaza look like in the 30s? They always had it was never like a perfect cone. They always had these like kind of wacky branches that stuck out. And if you look closely, <laughs> it is it is like that. Right. And what's nice about that is um, Mickey did exist in the 30s. You know, so we did some research on what did they have any Disney themed ornaments in the 30s? And they did. They, they actually sold these bells with the with the Fab Five on them. And um, they were like hand-drawn, old-school, black-and-white Mickey Mouse characters on it. So we found a set on eBay and actually redrew the same art that was on the ones that they sold there. So wow. it's, And they still if – you if you look at the ornaments on the tree in Buena Vista Street, there are these bells. And it's like I'm just waiting for that one grandma to walk up to the tree <laughs> and start crying because she's like – Oh my God! I had these ornaments as a kid. Oh. You know, that's what I'm. Oh, that's so. I'll cool. never know about it, but like, yeah. I just hope there's one or two people that like would remember it. And if you if you uh, Google search, you know, um, 1930s Christmas lights, 
with Disney or Mickey Mouse, you'll see them. There's, they're on eBay, and I've, I've thought about buying them. But. Well, we'll put it out there for all the listeners. If anybody <laughs> yeah. listening yeah. has ever had these ornaments or someone in your family has had these ornaments, join the conversation and leave a comment over on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or on the website. Tag Sam and let him know that somebody finally cried. Then I'll be the one crying. It would be so cool. <laughs> Imagine then, you know, if someone had pictures. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Really so I'm cool. sorry. You were saying. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> but what's funny, I think since the 30s, Christmas for that, and then looking at 1930s for the Queen Mary. Um, also looking at what Disney Sea did, because, you know, I, I'm a big theme park nerd. And, you know, even just living through the time in Orange County when they were talking about Port Disney being built around the Queen Mary. Mm-hmm. You know, then a few years later, they're like, they're going to open up Disney Sea at Tokyo. Well, that was based off the same plans that they had for Port Disney and Long Beach, and they just ended up building their own Queen Mary ship over there. I think they call it the Columbia. The Columbia. Yeah, and so they have like an American Harbor uh, waterfront area, like, like a New York area. That's where they have their replica, for the most part, of the Queen Mary. So I kind of imagine, like, well, what if this really was Port Disney? What would they do? And and that that style of attraction poster would definitely fit that look. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you, you you nailed it by having that comparison. Yeah, it was fantastic, man. So, Thank you. Um, okay, so you so you've been working for USC. You know, you realize after seven years, you know, I I got to do something else. So well, you, know, you start I, working I, um, on Queen Mary. What was the next step? Well, you you know, it's you think about okay, Queen Mary's one thing. What about the rest of the year? You know, there's some a lot of Halloween projects that were going on and that's another thing that really um, energizes me of course like you know Midsummer Scream think about all the Halloween convention type stuff um, you know and that's how I got connected with the Winchester Mystery House also through old Disney connections they remember me from back in the day at Disney they called me up like hey what do you want to you want to do some stuff with this you know I did some um, projects for them leading up to this but then they, they had a brand new Halloween program called Unhinged have you heard about Unhinged? I have I heard about it through you Awesome. Yeah, I talk yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, Unhinged was really cool. And I got to do their, um, help out with all their branding visuals um, and logos. And so when creating a logo like that on a new project, I got to pick the brain of the show creators because I wasn't coming up with the show or the tour or anything like that. I was just making the logo for it. So I knew the, the questions I had to ask to make sure that whatever logo I do actually reflects what the actual event is. Right, you know, think about it. The Winchester Mystery House. What could it be? And we landed on the keyhole. It just looked kind of mysterious, like a spooky mm-hmm. light coming through the, the key. And I'm like, all right, well, unhinged. The keyhole will look great for the eye. And we kind of played with it, and it's it's stuck. And one of the things I like to think about too when I'm designing a logo is you never know all the different areas that it's going to be used. And um, I'm I'm actually creating my website right now, and I kind of just wrote a nice article about when you're coming up with an art. Uh, a logo and it's for something yeah obviously you have to make sure it's going to look good on a black background or a white background it's got to look good when it's really small it's got to look good when it's really big or how, what does it look like when it's embroidered or silk screen or how do you even use this uh, in all these different ways like how would it look on a banner or even single tone yeah for sure right and you know um what's funny about that is i one of the things i could never even thought of but they ended up doing a projection mapping show on the winchester mystery house and they actually use the logo on the projection mapping. So I'm like, that's another so thing you cool. never even think about. You're like, <laughs> how is this going to look when it's projected 30 feet across on a yeah. old house? Uh, so th- there's just like so many fun projects. And it started adding up. And I started having to turn down projects, you know, um, trying to do some projects where I, I need to like maybe put in some vacation time or I'm working on other stuff because it really wasn't driving me anymore. Um, and I kind of just started. I didn't want to just quit because I really liked the people over there. They were like family for me that I started working with them on picking a date of like, okay, well, what if I was to leave and when would my last day be? And I picked my last day and, you know, a few months with ahead of time. So it could be like a nice transition. Didn't want to just kind of bounce. And it just coincidentally, here's the scary part is my last day was March 31st. And then, you know, all this junk hit. Yeah. Whoa. So that was the timing of that. It's crazy. Luckily, I'm still working. You know, I'm working on Wonderground stuff. I'm, there's some stuff coming up in the future that's really exciting. I'm waiting for those parks to open because I think that'll, you know, make more projects coming in. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, doing projects that are big like Queen Mary, it really turned my projects into more of an agency. 
in a way because I would hire people to assist me because I can't do everything by myself. But the same way the old, the people that I've worked with kind of pull me, we all kind of pull like these dream teams whenever we need some a specialist in this or that. And that's how we could go and address, you know, decorating 40 Christmas trees on the ship. Also right. planning uh, an install. Like you need to have someone on your team that could – be there and a crew that you could trust and can know that your vision and that's why it's so important for me to do this killer concept art for a few reasons i'll do a concept art for my event at queen mary where it um it gets the uh, the visual completely understood to like my client my client could speak the language now because they've heard my enthusiasm i'm excited about it i'm you know bouncing off the ceiling because i'm so stoked about what we're going to do on the ship that they take that artwork and enthusiasm, they talk to their bosses, who are the ones that are going to approve it and pay for the damn thing. And then, so it's important to go up that way. So it's also important to, to show it to your team. And then they, when they're installing it for you, and they're going to be there maybe at two in the morning, and they're going to be kind of like setting things up how you want it. There's a visual, there's a piece of art that says, this is how I want it to go. And then they speak that same language and they could help set that up for me. So I'm not going to be there 24 hours a day. That, and that's why it kind of it turned into Carter Creative, and it is it's you know Carter Creative Design Services, but it is like an agency where whenever you need anything, they call me up, and I'll, if needed, <coughs> excuse me, I'll round up the the, the experts, and most of us come from Disney. Yeah. Uh, most of us have been around, you know. There's so many different fun projects like that. So I knew the time was right. I didn't know that the coronavirus would would happen right about yeah. now. Yeah. But uh, like I said, luckily I'm still chugging along and I'm working from home and just challenging with the kiddos, obviously. But, um, besides that, it's been, it's been fun. The, the one downside though, and this is me just being a crybaby about it is that, you know, for, for maybe two or three years, I would just, every time someone would leave USC, they'd have like a going away party and I'd be at the going away party and I'd be like, man, I wish this was my going away party. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those yeah. vibes of like, well, then I, th I started thinking about it for three months. I'm like, what's my going away party going to be? Because I don't know if you knew, I, I, I kind of created the Tommy Trojan and Traveler costumes over there. Mm -hmm. And someone asked oh, me. Oh, we bought the Funko. Trust me. Oh, awesome. I got them right back. Right yeah, there, we got the Funko. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you. Um, well, I um, I said, like, my only request, just make sure Tommy Trojan shows up. Like, that's all I wanted, right? And then we had a, we had a work from home. We didn't know for how long. So my last oh, no. my last three weeks was working from home, and I didn't even get a going away party. But they did say oh. hopefully when this all blows over, we'll, we'll do something at the Coliseum, which would be cool. But well, we we have to make sure that happens for you because that's garbage. Be fun. I yeah, yeah I, was I don't appreciate that. that at all. <laughs> well, I, I I understand that it's tough because of everything that's going on. But you know, when you first told me what you were doing and how you were gonna venture out on your own like this. You know, it's funny, there's a lot of people that I talk to that tell me things like that. And I've been in that situation before. It's tough, man. I, unfortunately, because of our circumstances, I just couldn't make it work. And I had to go get another job. You know, we I had to start working again. But, you know, I've talked to other people that I, I have to tell them, like, look, the reality is this, 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 and this. This is what you're going to run into. This is what's going to be difficult. This is maybe where you're going to struggle in this and this. And it's so funny, man. Like, when you told me about it, I didn't feel like I had to tell you any of that. Oh, like, that's so like sweet of you. for you, like, I just felt like, yeah, dude, he's going to make it. Like, one, Thank you're you. talented as hell. Two, you know Agreed. what you're doing. And three, when you were talking about how you execute things, you said something super crucial that I've struggled with in the past, and that's communication. Mm -hmm. Like, it is so important to communicate your vision and no how to execute it. Yeah, you can't just spring something on somebody and then expect it to look like it's a a million dollars the next day yeah and and being able to communicate that and i've been on that boat you know because i've i've been around when you were setting things up at popzilla i saw that communication and i experienced it firsthand and we talked a little bit about it and i thought man this dude knows what he's talking about and so when you first told me i was like man he's gonna forget about me once he's famous <laughs> and i thought he's, he's just oh, gonna never. make it and i thought man so, Dude, I was so happy to see you when you came to Wonderground. I just thought it was so cool. Oh, I, I, I was happy to go, man. I, I love your artwork. You know, you're awesome. Your kids you. are the sweetest. Your wife is fantastic. 
You know, I, I consider myself fortunate to be able to call you my friend. Thank you. you know? I agree. And so Aww. anything I can do to support that, you know, I'll, I'll be there to support. Thank you, you Sarah. So, oh, yeah. Thank you so, so much. You said you're you're working on a website right now. Tell everybody what that's going to be and everything. Right. Well, that's an, see. Here's another thing. It's it's as, as of now, it's still samcarterart.com. Okay. Um, but at the same time, you know, I want to kind of switch that over to Carter Creative. So that'll be some some fancy working stuff over there. But um, yeah, that's the challenging thing too, right? We were just talking about having making something the best that you possibly can make it. Well, every time, ever since we started having websites, especially websites of your art, I always got hung up on what the damn website looks like versus the content that's on the website. So that was my goal with this one is, you know, because working at USC, we were designing the websites over there as far as like the, the LA Coliseum's website or even um, the bookstore website, different, um, different ones over there. It's probably a handful. Some restaurants had their own websites. So I was designing a lot of that, and I knew which themes I liked, and I knew what, what I really wanted mine to have. And so I, I picked, a, if you're familiar with websites, you know, we, we use WordPress, and we use the theme called Brooklyn. It has like a parallax type of look. I'm like, well, I know I want to have that. Well, how do I have that and pick a main image at the top and like some featured projects, and then I'm, we want to write a little bit about it. We wanted to have like a blog part to it too. So it's a lot of elements, man. And I'm having my brother-in-law uh, help me out. We're working together on this, and he's a whiz at this stuff. So if anyone needs a website designed, I got the guy for you. Hit me up for that too. Uh, so getting all that done, but you know, then I kind of have those flashbacks of like, man, I'm thinking too much about what the website looked like. But it goes back to like, well, people have short attention spans. If they see a crappy website, this is really your business card. This yep. has yeah. to really stand yeah. out. So I, I like to let the artwork stand uh, speak for itself. But I'm kind of going with a, a, a short and sweet mission statement. It really talks about the art of the experience. Because that's basically what I do. You're creating the visuals to help bring your event to life. Meaning whether it's a festival or whether it's a, a theme park ride or a land. Um, you know, a food and wine festival. You know, a couple years ago I found myself doing the Tournament of Roses' very first food and wine festival called Sip and Savor. I was doing that with Tim O'Day and some, uh, some friends over there from uh, former Disney people. And we were creating that, and that had to have some really, you know, solid branding and, and event planning. So, it's it's that group of creatives that really just kind of like work well together. We've all been through every experience you could possibly imagine at Disneyland, and that that training set us up for anything. Like we, I really feel yeah. like we could handle any project at this point. Um, you know, if it's one thing that's just me working on it, that's great. But if it, I, I'm, I can't wait for the next big project that comes along where I could kind of get my dream team together again. And, uh, and when, when we need a photographer, I know who I'm calling for that too, just so you know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> right? Melissa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, with my iPhone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, well, yeah, so that's you. the thing. We're just trying to get this website ready to go. Um, it's almost there. I think we're going to go live soon with it too. But it just basically showcases my best stuff. And you know, what's, nice. what's neat about it, it's barely any Disney on it you know like a lot of my experience comes from Disney but I've seen I've, I've noticed while building this I'm like I'm really glad I don't have to lean on that you know I don't yeah. I don't necessarily there's nothing like that you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to not do that but I'm just I feel grateful and lucky that I've been able to do all these fun projects that I've like you know I, I look at each one of them I'm like man that was a lot of fun oh yeah. like, that was a lot of fun too and you got to have a job that you enjoy Right, and, like, and just, a lot of those projects mm -hmm. that you've done are just so unique in their own way that they speak on their own. Like you can pull it out of the portfolio, and it stands on its own. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, that's cool too. I'm hoping for like the visuals to kind of speak for themselves too, because sometimes I don't have a lot to say about a project, but I'll just show the visual of it. Like for example, I, I designed the Bumblebee Man taco truck at Springfield at Universal Studios, and so or, or like the upstairs area at Krusty Burger in Springfield. So these really random things like. You can't, there's not a lot to say about it, but then you start writing some stuff. You're like, oh, wow, I just have 300 words about this. This is weird. But then, then you, I start overthinking all the wording, the, you know, all the words to it. Like, yeah. what am I now have to now have to write creatively about this where it's like, maybe not my strength, but I could talk about it forever. But it's just all these different things you got to kind of think about to make sure that your website's great because it does represent so much of what you do. And, um, but I, I've noticed that most of my stuff is word of mouth. And just friends and like, oh, you need a guy? I got a guy. You know, you got to call Sam up and do this kind of thing. But this is more, now that it's full time, kind of got to cast a bigger net out to kind of see like what other projects are out there. 
Yeah. But I've, I've really learned that it's that tourism industry. It's experiences and it's families having memories together. And um, I did some work with the city of Gwinnett Park, uh, some stuff with Knots, and I'm like, wow, I'm real. And I designed some logos for Magic Castle. I really felt like wow, I'm kind of getting around in a really good way, which is great because it's a small industry if you think about it. Um, it and it's the biggest rule, like just don't be a jerk, you know, don't be an a-hole. Like, it, you're first of all, just just be a cool person, please. But like your industry is so small, like word travels. I think it's it's harder to be a jerk. Yes. Like it takes yeah. more effort to be a jerk. Like just just be cool to people, and I, and it, it kind of like they'll remember me from that. From you know, oh, I mean, did you ever work with Sam? Oh, yeah, he's a nice guy. Uh, so, yeah, just just be cool, to everyone, and you know, don't burn any bridges, and hopefully everything works out. That is a fantastic way to just end this. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there was so much that I wanted to talk to you about about things that are going on Disney wise and everything, but I just realized that we've been going for about an hour. And oh, although I can sit here and talk for another three or four, I can be I have to be conscious that the computer that I'm going to be editing this on may not be able to handle this. And so <laughs> I, I'm first of all, oh, I'm no. just surprised. You. Thank you. I'm just surprised that it made it this far. Let me just say that. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm going to uh, we're going to end on that note. Um, we'll have to have you back and talk about some of this other stuff, uh, especially yeah. considering the parts are closed and everything. Uh, I appreciate oh. you being on, man. I appreciate you. And uh, Thank you, you too. one thing that I do have to touch on is March Mayhem ended on yes. this last weekend. And, uh, you know, this was the second tournament that we did this year. Obviously, we did March Mayhem. It turned out to be a hit. And we let the listeners decide whether or not they wanted us to do a second tournament just to pass the time while we are Why in not? our homes or not. Right. And it was a resounding 99%, I believe, 98 or 99% yes. There were <laughs> a handful of people that said no. But the majority won. We ended up doing March Mayhem in April. And by now, hopefully you know that Mulan took the tournament. It came down to the Jungle Book and Mulan. Sam, you saw the bracket. You saw everybody that was post-80s and pre-80s. I don't get it. Mulan won over a lot of the I classic pre-80s films. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I look at these votes and I just wonder, is the bot trolling us? Yeah. Is is that what's happening? And what then was that I guy on a, American Idol a long time ago that people were kind of voting for because he wasn't the best. Oh, what was his name? <laughs> um I remember Maybe something like that. Happened. Th there was a she bangs guy, right? <laughs> yes. I don't I don't remember. Oh, uh, Will Hung. William Hung? William Hung, yes, that was yes. his name. <laughs> he did the Ricky Martin song. Right, but I don't think that was the anyway, American Idol guy. I don't. I, I, <laughs> it's, it's, it's I forget his name. We're going to remember after this, but I'm sure the listeners know what we're talking about. We are. About. <laughs> I mean, look, Mulan is in no way an underdog, okay? So the fact that Mulan came, rose above everything, uh, a lot of other things in the bracket, I can understand. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that are feeling really strong for Mulan right now, especially because the live action film is going to be coming out. Uh, Which looks but, pretty good. Yeah. yeah, 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 it does. But I honestly, I didn't expect Mulan to take this one. You know, I love Mulan, but I can think of 10 movies I love more than Mulan. And yeah. five were at least <laughs> on this bracket. <laughs> <laughs> right? So... Uh, that is the finale of March Mayhem. If you guys want to take a look at it, head over to podcasters.com. You'll see the March Mayhem section. Click on it. You'll see all of the matchups, including all the percentages for the winners. And I don't know. I'm going to talk to Gavin and Melissa about possibly doing something special for this one like we did for the last one. And maybe we'll have a little something to give away uh, to the people that participated again. So... Um, all right. Uh, before we end the podcast, I do want to send a special shout out to the FGP squad. If you're new to the podcast, the FGP squad is a wonderful group of listeners, just like all of you that help us out with a monthly contribution via Patreon. If you want more information on how you can become part of the FGP squad, head over to podcasters.com slash FGP for more information. And of course, to all of the members of the FGP squad, we just want to send a huge thank you to all of you for your continued support. Sam, dude, thank you again for swooping in and taking on the co-host reigns. Uh, I Anytime. love having you fun. on. Yeah, Melissa, Super thank fun. you too. 
<laughs> uh, we, we learned a lot about your journey and I'm super happy for you. Thank you. I'm excited. All of the information we'll end up posting on the website. Of course, we'll share it once the new website is ready oh, to go as well. So yeah, I can't wait to share it. Tell everybody how they can keep in contact with you now. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I'm the most active on Twitter. I'm pretty much on there all damn day throughout the whole night. Uh, but find me at Cartar Sauce on Twitter. And I also do Instagram too, but that's kind of turning into just uh, my kiddos, which I will say there's some cool chop artwork going on at our, there our is, driveway. There is. There is. <laughs> that Snoopy artwork that they did. I mean, they're super talented, man. Aren't they good? Yeah, for four-year-olds. Not bad, right? It's such good line work. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, you know what? At least when we do the Back to the Future logo, just to hear my kids say Back to the Future, and like they, they know it, and then they're talking about the arrow and the logo. They're like, why is there an arrow? And I'm like, because it's going back. They're going back in time. And what's nice about it is I have a toy DeLorean that I let them play with because I'm that nice. And I, they, I always say, I'm like, oh, that's nice. daddy's car. That's daddy's car. <laughs> And then so when they were looking at the Back to the Future logo, I said, it's like Daddy's logo, Daddy's car. And then like he goes and he gets it. He's like, Daddy's car. I'm like, yes, you get it. Thank you. So they are definitely, <laughs> That's awesome. they get it. Right. I just need to hear That's him say so Great cool. Scott or something like that. But they were watching Ghostbusters yes. with me the other day. And then I'm not even kidding. My, <laughs> we're watching Ghostbusters and my kid comes in and he says, we got one and slams his hand down. I'm like, <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. Like I'm doing... Yeah. Parent winning. It's yes, so good cool. Job. Like my kids <laughs> also come over here and they tell me these random things from these old movies or these old video games. Right now they're really into all of our old retro video games because they're playing my old N sixty four games, the Nintendo, the Genesis, like they're they're just having a blast. And so they're coming back mm. and they're like, Dad, I found this secret and I found this and this. I was like, <laughs> you don't say what? <laughs> they think you're the smartest person alive for like being really good at these games. Yeah, right? like, how did you do that? I'm like, <laughs> right? I've been, I've been playing this for 30 years, kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me for sure. Anytime you want to talk, I'm always I'm always around to nerd out. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. So until next time, keep dreaming, keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye.